Well, as we continue our series on the Holy Spirit, you'll be, uh, you will recall perhaps that last week we looked at the messianic prophecy found in Isaiah 11. We were reminded of those gifts of the Spirit that would mark the true Messiah, the true Savior, King. Those gifts of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and of might, of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And now this week, as we turn towards the spiritual gifts that God bestows upon his body on earth, his people, his church. Let us stop and let us pray. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, open your word to us and open us ever more fully to receive your word. Amen. Let us first turn to the reading in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're simply going to be sharing together verses 10 and 11. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. What are these gifts that we are to, to be good stewards of? Well, there are many. But to discover just a few, turn with me, if you will, over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we'll be beginning picking it up at verse 4. Now, there are a variety of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who, act, who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually as the Spirit chooses. For just as the one body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ for in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. This is the word, the truth of God for us, the people of God. And thanks be to God. Amen. You know, so often when we hear the word gift, or maybe I should be speaking for myself, I remember as a little kid when I heard the gifts were coming out 
I, I didn't stop to consider the gifts that other people might be getting. I was thinking, ooh, my gift, my gift, where is it? I want it to be the biggest box, the most beautiful, the most well-wrapped. Mine, 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 mine. Oh, Lord, I pray I've grown a little bit. You see, the thing about gifts of the Spirit the one true spirit is yes, they are given to each and every one of us as God intends, as the spirit allocates. We each are given our own gifts, but those gifts are not for us. They are for those around They are for those that God places in our path along life's journey. You may have noticed that earlier in the service, um, we kind of skipped by the passing of the peace. Well, that was intentional. Because right now, I want us to share the peace and the hope and the truth of Christ in a way that perhaps we never have before. I want you, Elizabeth, to turn to Peggy and you repeat after me, sister. Peggy, you are a gift to me. Now repeat after me again. Peggy, I am a gift to you. Now repeat after me again. Peggy, we, the church, are a gift to the world. We, the church, are the gift to the world. Now, friends, I'd like you to turn to someone to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, and I want you to look them in the eye, and I want you to repeat after me, and then we're going to reverse things, and they're going to repeat after me to you. Bill, you and Bill. Sandy, you and Martha. Everybody choose somebody. Ronnie, it's you and me, brother. <laughs> now repeat after me. You are a gift to me. I am a gift to you. We, the church, are a gift to the world. Okay, other half, are you ready? I, no, you are a gift to me. I am a gift to you. We, the church, are a gift to the world. Now, friends, that's the start of what it is to be the church. It's acknowledging who we are. We are the people of God, the family of God. We are the body of Christ. We are not a monument to the past. We are a movement in the present, moving towards the future. We aren't an accessory on Sunday mornings. We are a necessity in this world that there may be hope and mercy and peace. We aren't a place, but we're a people. Friends, I don't know exactly what gifts the Lord has given to you. But I need to discover them just as you need to discover mine because we need one another. There are volunteers that have been helping out in the office and they can attest that your pastor's gift is not administration. But I have seen some of their gifts. 
the gifts of helping and of serving, the gifts of encouraging and upliving, uplifting, the gifts of forgiveness and grace. I'm excited, and I pray you are too, to be a part of God's church today. Yes, we've gone through some difficult times. Yes, this world is a mess, but by some great mystery, it is God's plan to use us as his church to bring forth his kingdom, and that is is our purpose. A purpose for us to live into. A purpose for us to grow into. A purpose for us to serve and to work and to love and to give into. You know the the older motto of the United Methodist Church, it kind of fell beside the wayside through the difficulties of the past. But it's more than a logo. It's more than a motto. It's more than a catchphrase. It is the ground of our purpose that we are a people of God with open hearts, with open minds, and with open doors. For if we are to be God's church, then this is a place that all may be welcomed, that all are cherished, that the sacred worth of all is recognized, that the gifts of all are are identified and incorporated into the work of Christ's hands and feet in this corner of God's creation. God's church isn't about men and women. It's not about black and white and brown. It's not about young and old. It's not about gay or straight. It's about being the children of God, the family of God, sisters and brothers to one another because Christ calls us brother, sister, and friend. That's the purpose of our gifts. Now, in the Bible study over the next few weeks, we're going to be diving in and we're going to be attempting to recognize the God-given gifts in each myself and also in each other. And what a wonderful thing if the entire church should do that together. If we need to add one, two, three, four more sessions during the week, so be it. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. Lord, you truly have gifted each and every one of us. Sometimes those gifts are hard to see. Sometimes... <laughs> They are really hard to believe and to accept. Yet, Lord, help us by your Holy Spirit not only to recognize the gifts that you give to your body, but to utilize them to your glory and to the good of this world. Lord, all this we pray in your name. And for your sake, amen.